welcome to one of the most majestic places in Western Norway, Chin Island. Located far out in the open sea, it is mostly known for its unique mountain, Chinaklova. There's so much more to Norway than Lofoten, and I'm so excited to show you some of the hidden treasures my part of the country has to offer. If you're new here, my name is Camilla, and I make travel videos here on YouTube. And this is my second episode from my Norway travel series. This winter, John and I spent one month in my homeland visiting some incredible sites that I can't wait to show you. In today's episode, we're exploring the mythical island recently made famous by the Hollywood movie Dune. More about that later. We also learned more about Chin's history and trying to understand how an island that used to have a population of 15,000 people wound up with just three inhabitants and some sheep. Before I show you what this island is all about, please remember to subscribe if you haven't already done that, hit the like button, and even better, leave a comment if you enjoyed today's episode. This is truly the best way to support my channel. With that said, put on your hiking boots and let's start today's adventure. Welcome to Chin! Let me quickly show you how we got here. Six fifty-five in the morning. So what a chin! Yeah, tusen tak. I forgot how much it is. Five hundred dollars. Five yeah, five thousand. Yeah, yes. Perfect, isn't that? Okay. So the boat just left. That means we are stranded at Chin Island until 3 p.m. and it's currently 7 a.m. Also, to get the boat to come and pick us up again, we have to call them and they have to come and pick us up. So we have to remember to call them so we don't get stranded here till tomorrow. You see how dark it is? It won't be light until two or three more hours. So luckily, my mom knew somebody from uh, DNT, which is basically the Norwegian tourism uh, group. And where we're staying is actually an old schoolhouse. So that is where we're heading. It's about 15 minute hike and that's it. So are you ready to go for the hike? Yep, let's do it. Okay, I'm actually gonna put on my beanie because it is currently one degree. And I do think it has a Norwegian flag. Yes, it does. It's focusing on the wrong thing. But yeah, this is my Norwegian beanie that's gonna keep me hot. Like, there's no light pollution out here. There's only, we're standing under the only light on the whole island. The moon is like this far from the mountain and we can see all the stars super clear. So yeah, I'm excited to go on this hike. So are you already cold? Yeah, my legs felt a little chill in the air. So luckily your mom gave me these. <laughs> she knows how to hike. Yeah, oh man, they're a little tight. Yeah, they're too I can't close them. Do you have to close them? I guess not. Luckily, there's no other people here. I could have used that instead. <laughs> yeah, <you laughs> that might be the spare one for who I forgot it. Uh, it comes with the boots. Yeah, it's just a onesie. Yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> Norwegian art at its finest. It's a fine specimen of local <laughs> art. Let's go. go. Let's go. With the moon shining bright down on us, we couldn't help ourselves and stopped every second to fully absorb the stillness around us. It felt like we were in another world. After a very slow walk, we finally made it to the cabin where we were taking shelter for the next hours. Okay, so to get in, you have to use this little code. Obstacle number one, remembering the combination to the lock. Da -da. Cool. Now we know where the bathroom is. Wow, this is so nice, Camilla. Yeah, so this used to be the old school house and this island when there was more people living here. But uh, yeah, but now it's just a cabin for tourists. And we're so lucky we get to rent. 
So glad I had the local hookup through you because <laughs> if it was just me, I'd be chilling on the beach with those sheep. <laughs> yeah, or where you were changing pants. Or running away from the sheep. Yeah, but we have to take our shoes off. They said in That's a big thing in Norway. You have to take your shoes off indoors. It doesn't matter if you're at a Fortune 500 board meeting. Once you get inside the office in your fancy suit, you gotta take your shoes off. And again, my my iconic hiking boots, Zara. Because nobody's got stinky feet in Norway. <laughs> It was a bit of a challenge to find the exact numbers and dates about this place online, but with the help of the Good Samaritans that still live there today, I got some information for you. The schoolhouse was built and ready to use around 1920. At that time, there were about 15 to 18 students, the highest number the school ever had. Pictured here, a few years later, is teacher Sophia Indrebe surrounded by some of her students. In the 1950s, there were about 11 to 13 students, and by the 1960s, the number was down to 5-6 people. This picture was taken around the same time on 17th of May, Norway's national holiday. If you see closely on the left side of the building, there was added a shack that was used as an outdoor toilet and storage for all the firewood. It looks a little different today, but you can easily imagine what it was like when it was used as a school. You can sleep up to 9 people here, and it comes with a large kitchen and common area. Anyone can stay at the cabin and sleep here. It's an unserviced cabin, so you basically have to trust that people follow the rules and leave it in a better condition than they found it. I will leave a link below if you want to stay here, and remember to bring your own bed sheets and towels if you come here. So we got strict rules that when you get here, you have to sign in into this book, and that's how we keep track of who's here. We can do it right now. I'm about to sign in. And it's funny because the person that stayed here yesterday was actually my music teacher in high school. So I guess that just shows how tiny my community is. So yeah, I will write down here. While we waited for the sun to wake up, we stayed warm and cozy inside the cabin and ate some breakfast. After patiently waiting for a while, the sun finally made an appearance in the horizon and this was the best sign we could get. A clear sky and no sign of rain and wind, that's almost unheard of in this part of Norway. The weather gods definitely had a say in this. Good morning again. As you can see, daylight is just starting to rise and we can finally see all the islands really clearly and the light is beautiful. Now we're walking towards the Shinnaklova and that is where I'll show you where Dune was filmed. We probably have like a 15-20 minute hike. So yeah, now you saw how we got here. The boat took around 30 minutes to get here from Flora and this is a little island right next to my hometown Flora and it's now made famous by the movie Dune. They included this as the home base for one of the families in the movie. It was already pretty famous in our region of course just by the natural beauty of it. It is currently December 20th and we are blessed with incredible weather. It's currently one degree and it's cold but we have tons of layers on and our mission today is that we're gonna try to hike up to the middle of Shinnaklova. That is the name of the mountain you see behind me and me and John and my mom have done that hike before. I've done it a few times. It's a pretty steep hike. So yeah, we brought some water. It's, it's short, but steep. Yeah, and it's a little scary because it's pretty far down and if you fall, you die. So it's scary. But yeah, this whole area is just so scenic. We were the only two people on the whole boat that were going to this location. So yeah, we basically have the whole island for ourselves and we've been able to capture some incredible drone shots and we're gonna try to fly the drone as well on the top when we get there and yeah i'm just so excited that we have this incredible weather and that we can just enjoy it all to ourselves let's try to hike the mountain Woo Woo and it's also sheep poop everywhere but i don't see any sheep and i want them there used to be so much fish in the waters surrounding Chin and my hometown Flora that this place became the central herring region in Norway in large parts of the 19th century. Imagine 15,000 people roaming around here during peak season. It's pretty surreal to think about when you see how empty it is today. 
But as with most things in nature, the supply was not unlimited, so the herring dream came to an end. Eventually, the area ran out of fish, and with it, the people vanished too. The quintessential red houses you see here today are mostly summer cabins for people with family roots to the island, except the three people who still live on the island today. So, <laughs> we've been walking in sheep poop along the hallway and it's a lot, like literally everywhere. And I've been wondering where they are. And now suddenly we see like two of them just staring us right in the eye. And one of them have massive horns. But hopefully they're more afraid of us than we are of them. Yeah, no. <laughs> now I'm remembering last time we did it. It's not very high, but it's very steep. And back then, I was pretty out of shape, just a city boy from New York City. And now I am way more out of shape. <laughs> I'm an old man from New York City. Do you have the proper boots? I don't know. You tell me. As long as we don't fall. We got this. Yeah. See you at the top. Come on. <laughs> I think we're halfway. Doesn't look like much anymore. Yeah, it doesn't. <laughs> Maybe I was more out of shape back then than I, was, than I am now. Maybe. You look like you're doing this just fine. Yeah. Whoa. <sighs> yeah, so we did it. Right over the reveal. Wow, so pretty. So we made it! And it was scary. It was a little hard, or actually very hard. So if you take this hike, be prepared for some climbing. Were you scared? Uh, no, like I said earlier, it's not a big hike. It's just that you start and it's okay. And then all of a sudden at the last bit, it gets pretty steep. So then you feel like if you like lose your footing, you might just tumble down to your death. Exactly. And it's such an unusual mountain. Like it's got this unusual shape so that you're at the top of the middle part, but you're protected by these two walls, like the two ears. I almost want to say like devil's horns. <laughs> now, wish us luck, we're gonna head back down. Yeah. We had a little snack break, some chips and chocolate. Yep, yeah we did. Yeah. Okay, this is one of the most incredible hikes to do in Norway. It's beautiful view. Yeah. And there are eagles that have their nests up here. So they come check you out, they alert the others, and then they go about their business. That's a little scary too, that they're gonna attack us or the drone. <laughs> yeah. And then just you just have that view of uh, the islands. It's something else. Yeah. Just make sure to hold on to stuff. Are you gonna put the camera down? Uh-uh, I'm filming living on, on the wild side. You're doing so well with your Zara boots. <laughs> your Zara disco boots. down from the hike and we fell a few times but it worked out fine but I wish we had a little more time to stay here but the boat only goes back two times a day so we have to run to the boat in 20 minutes 
Behind me is the church here on Chin and it's called Chinna Chircha. This church behind me here is from the year 1100 and it has a lot of rich history. When I was here last summer, I actually got to go inside it and got a little guided tour from the woman who work there, but they're not open during Christmas, but I'll include some of that footage now so you get to see inside it. Is it good to film it? Yes, it's good. Have you ever asked if you can come in? No, you can come in. No, you can come in. Yes, yes. So handy. Wow, so this is the entrance. Ever since the Viking era, this captivating island has been associated with old tales and myths. This might be the oldest Christian place of worship in Norway that has been in continuous use ever since the early Viking times until today. Both Christian Celtic slaves and holy monks might have lived here. Discoveries of old bones have been the fuel to the old legends about the holy men resting on this island. The church is usually open from mid-June to end of August and the church host will hold prayers regardless of how many people are attending the service. And then up here you have like a whole theater stage. That's where they usually have the Chinna Spela and that has not been done in the last two years because of COVID. But yeah, usually people come from all over Norway and they sit up in the hill and they sit on the steps over there. This historic play has been held on Chin Island since 1985 and almost 100,000 people have seen it since it premiered, which is a lot for such a small place. In short, it's about the introduction of the Protestantism in the 16th century and the opposition it met from the local villagers before it was established. Throughout the play, you'll also hear the legends about how this church was built and learn about the two sisters, Saint Sunuva, who escaped from the Viking King Ram because she didn't want to become queen, and her sister Borni, who ended up at Chin Island, where she supposedly built this church. And she's supposedly still here. So, haunting the island. Haunting the island. We didn't see her today. We sell cake, coffee, and this is where the people that maintain the church and all of them hang out in here. There you have it guys. I really hope you enjoyed our Chin Island tour and hopefully you get to stay on this island too. There's so many cool places to stay in Norway and I hope this video inspired you to come and visit. The tickets for the boat are like $10 or $20. And I'm sorry, I just wiped my mouth with the gloves that had the dirt from the you know, <laughs> mountain with all the goat poop. You probably have some poop in your face, but was uh, it worth it? Yes, yes. Like, look at one this. One of the best hikes I've ever done. Me too, like in my entire life. I'm Norwegian, but this was just one of the most incredible hikes Perfect ever. Perfect weather. So yeah, if you liked today's video, the boat is behind us. Remember to comment, subscribe, and like this video. That helps my channel out a lot. And we will see you guys in the next video. Thank you again so much for watching today's episode. We were incredibly lucky with the weather the whole day, even on our way back home to my island. It usually rains a lot in this region, but I guess the Norse gods were watching over us, giving us safe passage back home. I hope this episode sparked your curiosity, and if you have time on your next trip to Norway, the western region and Chin Island is definitely worth a visit. With all that said, I wish you guys a beautiful rest of the day, and I'll see you again in my next episode from Norway. Bye!